does not fall under the Data Privacy Act if it is an information pertaining to uh, an entity that is not a natural person. Consent must be something that is mechanical and tangible. It must be proven. That is a uh, consent that is required under the Data Privacy Act. You have to prove that you have obtained the consent uh, to from help a data out those subject. So who may wish to have some questions, probably uh, they can send their questions to the uh, Villas' Law Center and we'll try to uh, answer them. Three things, no? we were reminded by the National Privacy Commission that the cardinal rule, if you talk about processing of data information, is that do not collect if you cannot protect. The, the primary impact of the Data Privacy Act, my friends, are the eight rights provided by law. Very important. There are eight rights here. You talk about the right to be informed, the right to access, the right to erasure or blocking, the right to object, the right to rectify. You talk about data portability, the right to file a complaint, and of course, the right to, da to damages. Data is more valuable than money because if someone takes your money, that's all they have, okay? But if you let someone take your data, oh my God, eventually, they will take your money too. So does the DPA only cover personal information per se, or does it also cover information about companies, testing results, and... Hey sir, uh, good Hi. evening. Sir, just a question about the DPO offices. Is Ooh. there such a thing as a void or not valid DPO officer appointment, uh, wherein um, even though the NPC has properly recognized his appointment, We will be having our second quiz. Please just kindly, you know, enter the link in the chat box. Okay, so we can get started. So I think a little bit of an icebreaker is in order. Uh, can we bring out the wheel? Yes, we will do again, Rafa. Congratulations, Ronaldin. A. Irvine. the verification. General rule, the party must sign the verification. Certification is from shopping, the party must sign. The certification is from shopping, that is the rule. Okay? But if does not fall under the Data Privacy Act if it is an information pertaining to uh, an entity that is not a natural person. Consent must be something Integrated in our uh, constitution that you know the state owns all real property and all lands in the Philippines.
the new rules on civil procedure. Okay, diretso. Yung 2020 rules on civil procedure were promulgated by the Supreme Court precisely, my friends, because of the Supreme Court's rulemaking power or the power oh, of Rule 1, actually. So let me begin, my friends. No, So if you will read the, the amendments, actually, if you will study it carefully, you will realize that there are how many areas here? Only nine areas to consider. Okay? What are these? Amendments under the rules on pleadings. Pagkasama-samahin ko na. Rule 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13. Then number two, amend, uh, rule, uh, amendments no? under Rule 10 on amendments. Okay? Uh, important changes introduced to the rules of amendment under Rule 10. What else? Amendments under the rules on summons. Rule 14. Okay? What else? Amendments under Rule 15 on motions. Amendments, of course, introduced to Rule uh, to Rule 18, pre-trial. Dito, marami po. Ayan. And of course, Rule 30, trial, my friends. Finally, there are amendments also that should be discussed under Rule 33, my friends. Okay, under Rule 33, the more of the evidence, and of course, judgment on the pleadings under Rule 34, po yan. Rule 34, okay? And of course, summary judgment, Rule 35. So let us enjoy our journey towards the rules on civil procedure. Notable changes and amendments under pleadings, specifically talk about the rule on verification. Di ba? Yung verification po, yung attestations niya, expanded na. Bakit? Okay? I'll start, my friends, no? By uh, first, ito. Di ba yung sa verification, who must sign the verification? General rule, the party must sign the verification. Certification is from shopping. The party must sign. The certification is from shopping. That is the rule. Okay? Pero paano if the party is an individual? Okay? And he executed a special power authority, SPA, authorizing another individual to sign the verification is not allowed. Uh, di ba? What is the...
on civil procedure. Okay, diretso. Yung 2020 rules on civil procedure were promulgated by the Supreme Court precisely, my friends, because of the Supreme Court's rulemaking power or the power wow, of probably great. one, actually. So let me begin, my friends, no? So if you will read the, the amendments, actually, if you will study it carefully, you will realize that there are how many areas here? Only nine areas to consider, okay? What are these? Amendments under the rules on pleadings. Pagkasama-samahin ko na. Rule 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13. Then number 2, amend, uh, rule, uh, amendments no? under Rule 10 on amendments. Okay? Uh, important changes introduced to the rules of amendment under Rule 10. What else? Amendments under the rules on summons. Rule 14. Okay? What else? Amendments under Rule 15 on motions. Amendments, of course, introduced to Rule uh, to Rule 18, pre-trial. Dito, marami po. Ayan. And of course, Rule 30, trial, my friends. Finally, there are amendments also that should be discussed under Rule 33, my friends. Okay, under Rule 33, divorce the evidence, and of course, judgment on the pleadings under Rule 34, po yan. Rule 34, okay? And of course, summary judgment, Rule 35. So let us enjoy our journey towards the rules on civil procedure. Notable changes in amendment under pleadings, specifically talk about the rule on verification. Di ba? Yung verification po, yung attestations niya, expanded na. Bakit? Okay? I'll start, my friends, no? By uh, first, gito. Di ba yung sa verification, who must sign the verification? General rule, the party must sign the verification. Certification is from shopping. The party must sign. The certification is from shopping. That is the rule. Okay? Pero paano if the party is an individual? Okay? And he executed a special power authority, SPA, authorizing another individual to sign the verification is not allowed. Okay, di ba? What is the... Good day to our dear attendees from different parts of the country. I pray that you're all in a great state of health. This free webinar is streaming live via the Villales Law Center's YouTube channel and Facebook page. If you can hear my voice clearly, please type in the comment section, hashtag VLC. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Optimize this learning opportunity. Share this free online lecture to your friends and together learn at the comfort of your homes. I want to formally welcome you all to this free webinar. This is part of a series of free online lectures brought to you by the virtual law companion of Villatis Law Center. Allow me to share to you this good news. The Virtual Law Companion is the newest innovation of Villages Law Center, which aims to provide an easy, convenient, and quality bar review experience. The Virtual Law Companion is a web application that is hosted on a dedicated cloud server. It can be accessed via the internet 24-7 for any web browser using any device or handheld computers like Android or iOS phones. Meaning, you can study anytime, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Please visit our website at www.biliazislawcenter.com to know more about our programs and activities. Before we formally start, please take note of some reminders. First, this free webinar is pre-recorded to ensure the uninterrupted streaming of lectures. Secondly, VLC team will be with you to assist you should you need more information about our programs. 
please visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page. Without further ado, please give your virtual class and welcome our lecturer today. Again, this free webinar is brought to you by our virtual law companion. Maraming salamat po. Together, we can make things happen. Together, we can. Our lecturer has more than 16 years in the practice of law in the field of litigation, and almost the same number of years in managing his own law office. Currently, he is teaching at the San Sebastian College Ricolitos College of Law and College of Criminal Justice of the Cavite State University main campus. He has authored books entitled, Conceptual Approach to Torts and Damages and Conceptual Approach to Special Proceedings, both published by the Central Book Supply Incorporated. He is a trained commercial arbitrator of the Philippine Dispute Resolution Center Incorporated. Presently, he works as legal counsel of Del Monte Land Transport Bus Company Incorporated or DLTB. Before that, he has already worked in several companies either as retained counsel or corporate secretary since 2004, applying knowledge in civil, criminal, labor, and corporate laws in the rendering of legal opinions, providing legal consultations, drafting and reviewing of contracts, and representing the companies before judicial and administrative bodies. Let us all welcome Professor Wilson A. Legaspi. Good day, everyone. I am Professor Wilson Legaspi, and welcome to this free online lecture brought to you by the Virtual Law Companion of the Biliasis Law Center. Prepare for the bar examinations at any time, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Check out the VLC website at www.biliasislawcenter.com for more details and particulars. Optimize this learning opportunity like the VLC Facebook page and share this FB live session. Host a watch party via FB and tag your friends now. And together, learn at the comfort of, of your homes. Before we start, please uh, comment VLC if you can hear me clearly. Uh, good morning, everyone. What, will we, what we will be discussing today is resilient features of my book in a special proceedings entitled Conceptual Approach to Special Proceedings. I've chosen to discuss with you the chapter on the recognition and enforcement of foreign judgment on divorce. Okay. The basis of this provision is the one provided in Article 26, second paragraph of the Family Code. It provides that where a marriage between a Filipino citizen and a foreigner is validly celebrated, any divorce is, is thereafter validly obtained abroad by the alien spouse, which capacitates him or her to remarry. The Philippine spouse shall have the capacity to remarry under the Philippine law. So uh, even if the divorce is not yet recognized in the Philippines, the foreign divorce obtained abroad can be recognized here in the, in the Philippines you know, through this Article 26. The other basis of this uh, petition, of this kind of petition for uh, recognition and enforcement of foreign judgment on divorce is Section 48 of Rule 39 of the Rules of Court, which provides that in case of a judgment or final order upon a specific thing, the judgment or final order is conclusive upon the title to the thing. Second way, in case of a judgment or final order against a person, such judgment or final order is presumptive evidence of the right as between the parties and their successors in interest by a subsequent title. Either way, whether it is a judgment or final order upon a specific thing, or it is a judgment or final order against a person, it can be repelled by evidence of want of jurisdiction, want of notice of the party, collusion, fraud, or clear mistake of law or fact. So the question is, how can a foreign judgment of divorce 
be recognized in the Philippines. Upon learning the basis of the recognition of foreign judgment on divorce, how can it be recognized in the Philippines? Under the rules and evidence, as amended by AM 19-08-15-SC, which took effect on uh, May 1, 2020, there are three ways of recognizing a foreign judgment of divorce in the Philippines. First is by an official publication, either of a decree of divorce or the law on divorce of a foreign country. If there is no official publication, it can also be proved by a copy attested by the officer having the legal custody of the record and accompanied if the record is not kept in the Philippines with a certificate that such officer has the custody. Yung second way ay yung tinatawag natin consularization of document. So it will be what it will be proven by uh, by a, by a securing a copy, a certified true copy, and having it uh, certified in our embassy abroad or in the Department of Foreign Affairs. The third way, as introduced by the by the amendment in our rules of evidence is this. If the office in which the record is kept is in a foreign country, which is a contracting party to a treaty or convention in, in which the Philippines is also a party, it can be proven by a certificate or its equivalent, which shall be in the form prescribed by such treaty or convention. This amendment, this later uh, introduction, this later uh, amendment to our rules and evidence is made pursuant to our accession to the Apostille Convention, okay, which uh, took effect in the Philippines on May of 2019. Okay. Is there a need to consularize the document? No, because according to the said provision of our rules and evidence, a document that is accompanied by a certificate or its equivalent may be presented in evidence without further proof because the certificate or its equivalent shall be a prima facie evidence of the due execution and genuineness of the document involved. Okay. But in some cases, the certificate will not be necessary so that according to our amended rules and evidence, the certificate shall not be required when a treaty or convention between a foreign country and the Philippines has abolished the requirement or has exempted the document itself from its formality. So what will be the legal consequence if there is failure on the part of a party to plead and prove the loss of, of a foreign country? Diba, sabi natin kanina, isa sa mga ipoproduce na document before a petition for recognition of divorce be recognized, before a divorce be recognized in the Philippines, is by introduction, is by uh, proving the loss of a foreign country. So what will be the consequence? If there is failure on the part of the party to prove the loss of a foreign country. Under the doctrine of processual presumption, the Philippine law will apply. Okay? Since we have no uh, law on divorce yet, so now we will know the consequence. The petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce will be denied. Okay? So it is very important for us to plead and prove not only the divorce decree, but also the law of the foreign country on divorce. Okay. So one of the pieces of evidence to be proved, to be pleaded and proved is the divorce decree. What do we mean by divorce decree? Does, is it limited to the judgment of the foreign of the court of, of a foreign country uh, rendered in a divorce proceeding which has become final and executory and thereafter a decree of divorce uh, is issued according to the recent case of Inre Takahashi, which was promulgated on December 5 of 2019. The divorce decree also includes the divorce report 
divorce certificate or its equivalent when divorce is obtained by other than court proceedings. Because we all know that in other countries, divorce can be obtained by agreement of the parties like in Japan. There's no need to file a petition in court. It can be obtained by mere agreement of the parties. So in, tho in those countries like Japan, uh, there is no divorce decree. What uh, is issued is a divorce report or divorce uh, certificate or its equivalent. Okay. Why is it, uh, why can it be admitted as evidence uh, despite the fact that it can strictly, it is, not, it is not considered a foreign judgment on divorce? Because also according to our rules and evidence, these documents are considered written official acts or records of official acts of sovereign authority. It falls into the category of a public document. Okay. So who should file a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce? Okay. Ang sabi doon kanina sa Article 26, when a divorce is validly obtained by a foreigner ab abroad, the Filipinos shall have the capacity to remarry. At first glance, uh, we may conclude that it is the Filipino, the Filipino citizen who can file a petition who is the only one can, who can file the petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce. Okay. Pero bago natin sagutin yan, ang malagang tanong na dapat munang masagot ay uh, is the filing of a petition for divorce limited only to foreigner, foreigner to natural born uh, citizen of another country? Can it be availed of by a former Filipino citizen who is now a citizen of another country? That is answered in the case of Republic versus Orbesido, no? a 2005 case. The issue is whether or not a former Filipino citizen can file a petition for divorce, which can be recognized in the Philippines. As sabi ng court in that case, taking into consideration the legislative intent and applying the rule of reason, Article 26, Paragraph 2 was interpreted to include cases involving parties who at the time of the celebration of the marriage were Filipino citizens. But later on, one of them becomes naturalized as a foreign citizen and obtains a divorce decree. Prior to this ruling of the court in Republic versus Orbesido, hati ang opinion the legal community. Okay, some say that it cannot be a former Filipino citizen cannot file a petition for divorce, which can be recognized in the Philippines because that will amount to circumvention of the law. Others say otherwise. But now this issue has already been settled in the case of Republic versus Orbesido. So according to that to the court in that in the said case, the Filipino spouse should likewise be allowed to remarry as if the other party were a foreigner at the time of the solemnization of, of the marriage. To rule otherwise would be to sanction absurdity and injustice. Okay, so the rule now is that the reckoning point is not the citizenship of the parties at the time of the celebration of the marriage, but their citizenship at the time a valid divorce is obtained abroad by the alien spouse okay so after uh, answering the issue of whether or not a former filipino citizen can file a petition for divorce which later on can be recognized in the philippines uh, we must now answer who is the proper party to file a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce in the case of corpus versus santo tomas the issue is does a foreigner have the right to file a petition with the court for the recognition of foreign divorce decree? Okay. Uh, tatandaan natin na sa Article 26, uh, it may be said that it is only the Filipino spouse who can file a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce. 
But according to the case of Corpus versus Santo Tomas, the unavailability of the second paragraph of Article 26 of the Family Code to aliens does not necessarily strip a foreigner of legal interest to petition the court for the recognition of their foreign divorce decree. Okay, what is the reason? According to the court, the foreign divorce decree itself, after its authenticity and conformity with the alias national law have been duly proven according to our rules of evidence, serves as a presumptive evidence of right even in favor of a foreigner. So that is pursuant to section 48, rule 39 of the rules of court. Therefore, according to the court, direct involvement or being the subject of the foreign judgment is sufficient to clothe a party with the requisite interest to institute an action before our courts for the recognition of the foreign judgment. Okay. So after the court has settled the issue of whether a foreigner can file a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce, another issue came up in the case of Republic versus Manalo. The issue is, does a Filipino citizen have the capacity to remarry after initiating a divorce proceeding abroad and after obtaining a favorable judgment against their alien spouse? So, yun ang tanong. Okay? Because, tatandaan natin, according to Article uh, 26, second paragraph of the Family Code, uh, after a foreigner obtained a divorce abroad, the Philippine spouse shall have the capacity to remarry. Okay? So, one may say that it should be the alien, it should be the foreigner, who should file a petition for divorce abroad. But according to the court in the case of Republic versus Manalo, Article 26, second paragraph of the Family Code speaks of a divorce validly obtained abroad by the alien spouse. It only requires that there be a divorce validly obtained abroad. Okay? The letter of the law does not demand that the alien spouse should be the one who initiated the proceeding. Okay, it does not distinguish whether the Filipino spouse is the petitioner or the respondent in the foreign divorce proceeding. So what will now be the effect of this ruling? So even a Filipino spouse can initiate a divorce proceeding abroad. In fact, in other countries like in Japan, where a divorce can be obtained by mere agreement. So we can now say in a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce in the Philippines, we can uh, include in the allegation that it is the Filipino or it is the Filipino with his or her spouse who initiated the divorce proceeding abroad. Okay, so that is the effect of this ruling. Uh, when in, when uh, previous to this, to this ruling, uh, maingat na maingat minsan ng mga abogado sa pag-aalage, uh, pag sa pagbibigay, pag, uh, in making allegations in the petition for recognition of foreign judgment on, on divorce. Okay. Ang sabi pa ng court dito sa case ng Republic versus Manalo, even if the word obtained were interpreted to mean that the divorce proceeding must be actually initiated by the alien spouse, still, the court will not follow the letter of the statute when to do so with depart from the true intent of the legislature. Okay. Or would otherwise yield conclusions inconsistent with the general purpose of the act. If that is interpreted the other way, okay, kawawa naman ang Filipino spouse, matagal ng uh, divorce ang asawa niya, uh, ang dati niyang asawa na foreigner, pero siya ay nakatali pa rin. Okay. So the court in Republic vs. Manalo has come up with a liberal interpretation of Article 26, Paragraph 2 of the Family Code. Okay. The purpose of Paragraph 2 of Article 26 is to avoid the absurd situation where the Filipino spouse remains married to the alien spouse who, 
after a foreign divorce decree that is effective in the country where it was rendered is no longer married to the Filipino spouse. Ayan pa sinasabi ng court sa case ng Republic versus Manalo. A Filipino who initiated a foreign divorce proceeding is in the same place and in like circumstances as a Filipino who is at the receiving end of an alien-initiated proceeding. Wala rin namang magiging pagkakaiba sa konsekwensya. Whether the Filipino initiated a petition for divorce or whether he or she is the respondent ganun din ang konsekwensya. Magiging malaya rin yung asawa niya. No? So, uh, jurisprudence now has made it a rule that the Filipino spouse, whether he or she is the one who initiated or whether he or she is the one who is at the, at the receiving end of a divorce proceeding, dapat na rin palayain. He or she must be allowed to, re, to remarry. No? But that divorce must first be recognized here in the Philippines. Okay. So this ruling of the court in Manalo, Republic versus Manalo, was reiterated in uh, in Re Takahashi and Morania versus Republic. No. Uh, we already mentioned this uh, case a while ago. Uh, interpreting the meaning of the divorce decree. Okay. What is the proper proceeding that a party should avail of in the filing of the petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce? Prior to this uh, ruling of the court in Corpus versus Santo Tomas, uh, what we were doing is this. We will file a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce. Uh, in the residence of the either the petitioner or or the respondent or the petitioner uh, usually okay we follow the rules on uh, declaration of nullity of void marriage in the residence of the either of the parties who reside in that place uh, for at least uh, six months but now the court has made it clear okay that the recognition of foreign judgment on divorce may be filed in the RTC, okay, where the entries, uh, where the marriage is celebrated, okay. As in sinasabi dyan, the, the recognition that the RTC may extend to the Canadian Divorce Decree does not by itself authorize the cancellation of the entry in the civil registry. A petition for recognition of a foreign judgment is not the proper proceeding contemplated under the rules of court for the cancellation of entries in the civil registry. Okay. The recognition of the foreign judgment may be made in a Rule 108 proceeding. Okay. So why Rule 108? Because it involves the cancellation of entries in the civil registry where the marriage was uh, celebrated. Okay. So in the Rule 108 petition, alam naman natin na ang venue is in the place where the record is located in the civil registry of a place where the record is located. Okay. So if you want to file a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce, it must be filed in the place where the marriage was celebrated because it is there where the entry of where the mary where the uh, record is uh, located okay in the civil registry where the marriage was celebrated okay because kung yan ay recognition lang of a foreign judgment uh, it has no effect on the cancellation of the entry in the of the certificate of marriage the question now, after resolving the issues of who can file a petition for divorce, who can file a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce, is this. What is the proper proceeding that a party should avail of in the filing of a petition for recognition 
of foreign judgment on divorce. Okay. Before this, uh, we follow the rule. As a, as a practitioner, we follow the rules on declaration of nullity of void marriage as to the venue. We filed it in the place where the petitioner or the respondent is uh, residing for at least six months. But the case of Cruz versus Santo Tomas has served as a guide to where the, fi where the petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce uh, should be filed. Although, as we read this case, uh, we can have a conclusion that it is not mandatory. It is merely an advice. But it is better that this uh, ruling, particular ruling of the court, should be followed. Ang sabi dyan sa case na yan, uh, the rule to be followed is Rule 108. Ibig sabihin, alam naman natin sa Rule 108 uh, petition, cancellation or correction of entry in the civil registry, it should be filed in the place where the civil registry is located or situated. So, ang ibig sabihin niyan, when the court said that we should follow Rule 108, it means that the petition for the recognition of foreign judgment on divorce should as much as possible be filed in the place where the marriage was celebrated because it is there when the entry is recorded. Okay. What is the reason? According to the court of, in the case of Corpus versus Santo Tomas, the recognition that the RTC may extend to the Can Canadian Divorce Decree does not by itself authorize the cancellation of the entry in the civil registry. Okay. A petition for recognition of a foreign judgment is not the proper proceeding contemplated under the rules of court for the cancellation of entries in the civil registry. Okay. The court further said that the recognition of the foreign divorce decree may be made in a Rule 108 proceeding itself as the object of special proceedings is precisely to establish the status or right of a party or a particular fact. Okay. The court further said that Rule 108 of the Rules of Court can serve as the appropriate adversarial proceeding by which the applicability of the foreign judgment can be measured and tested in terms of what? Of jurisdictional infirmities, want of notice to the party, collusion, fraud, or clear mistake of law or fact. Okay. So that is the ruling of the court uh, as to the issue of when, uh, where we should file a petition for recognition of foreign judgment on divorce. I, ho I hope you are enjoying this webinar. Uh, please comment a VLC. Okay. Before we go to another topic, and I hope you are learning from this webinar. Uh, if you do, please uh, share your takeaways so far, so far by typing them in the comment uh, section. Okay. So we now go to another topic, another salient feature in my book on uh, special proceedings, no? conceptual approach to special proceedings. I'm referring to the rule on declaration of absolute nullity of void marriages and annulment of voidable marriages. Particularly, we will be discussing uh, as to who can file the petition for the declaration of nullity or annulment of marriage, marriages, voidable marriages, and the proper venue. Okay, because just recently the court has made uh, an amendment to the rules no? by way of a circular. Okay, so according to Section 2A of AM number 02-11-10-SE, otherwise known as the rule on the declaration of nullity of void marriages and annulment of voidable marriages, the petition for the declaration of nullity of void marriage shall be filed solely by the husband or the wife. Okay? In case of a void marriage. Okay. Is this rule uh, absolute? The court in the case of Fujiki versus Marinai okay, has made the following ruling. Ang sabi ng court, 
it cannot be applied when the ground for the nullity of marriage is bigamy. Why not? According to the court, a spouse in a subsisting marriage or the prior subsisting marriage can file a petition for the declaration of nullity of a subsequent bigamous marriage. Why? Because the prior spouse has a personal and material interest in maintaining the integrity of the marriage he or she contracted and the property relations arising from it. He or she is interested in the cancellation of an entry of a bigamous marriage in the civil registry because it compromises the public record of his or her marriage. Okay. So as sinasabi dyan, uh, the prior the spouse, the prior spouse in a subsisting marriage has an interest to protect. For example, yung kanyang property interest in the marriage, like the right to be supported, okay, and to preserve the property regime of the marriage. Okay. So, paano na justify itong particular ruling na to ng court? Uh, considering that under the rules that they themselves uh, promulgated, it is only the husband or the wife who shall file a petition for the declaration of nullity of void marriage. Ito sinasabi ng court. When Section 2A states that a petition for the declaration of nullity of void marriage may be filed solely by the husband or wife, it refers to the husband or the wife of the subsisting marriage. Okay? Bigamous marriages are void from the beginning. Thus, the parties in a bigamous marriage are neither the husband nor the wife under the law. In the eyes of the law, they are not husband and wife. Okay? So that it can be assailed of any time. Even by the prior spouse in the prior subsisting marriage. Okay? So after resolving that issue, which is uh, was uh, recently uh, ruled by the court, we now go to venue. What is the proper venue in filing a petition for the declaration of nullity of void marriage? It shall be filed in the place where the petitioner or the respondent resides for at least six months upon the filing of the petition. But in case of a non-resident respondent, it may be filed in the place where he or she may be found in the Philippines at the election of the petitioner. Okay. Just recently, the court has issued a resolution strengthening the compliance with the jurisdictional requirement in the filing of the petition for uh, declaration of clarity of void marriages and, uh, and also as well as with regard to the petition for annulment of voidable marriages. This uh, circular has been issued to strengthen the rules on venue because uh, previous to this uh, circular, there are a number of cases where the party had to choose uh, where to file the petition, okay, in the hope of getting a favorable judgment. So now the court has strengthened this particular uh, compliance with the jurisdictional requirement. According to that circular, circular issued by the Office of the Court Administrator 63-2019, okay, to prove residence, uh, uh, the petitioner must attach the following in the petition. Sworn certification of residency with house location sketch issued by the barangay. So even the barangays who issued the certification must have it what? Notarized. Okay. Must have it uh, sworn to before a person authorized to administer oath, particularly the, of the notary public. Okay. Other document, sworn statement of counsel of record. So even the lawyer shall uh, make a sworn statement 
ano yung nakalagay sa sworn statement ng lawyer that he or she has personally verified petitioner's residency and the petitioner has been residing there at for at least six months prior to the filing of the petition. Ano pa? Ito pa. Any other document? No? Any other supporting documents like the utility bills in the name of the petitioner for at least six months prior to the filing of the petition? Government issued ID or company ID bearing the photograph and address of the petitioner and issued at least six months prior to the filing of the petition. If the petitioner is renting a place, he or she must also produce the notarized lease contract and receipts of rental payments, okay, bearing the address of the petitioner, okay, for at least six months prior to the filing of the petition. Uh, in case he or she owns the, the house where he or she is residing, he or she must also provide transfer certificate of title, or if not title, even a tax declaration or deed of sale and the like, in the name of the petitioner where he or she resides. Prior to this uh, circular of the Supreme Court, ang uh, naunang nagpatupad nito, if I may recall, is the Office of the City Prosecutor of Bacoor. Okay? So, uh, some of my uh, petition for declaration of nullity of marriage, nagre-require niyan. When we, when we go to a hearing for a non-conclusion investigation, we are provided with the list of the documents to be complied with by the petitioner. Ito nga yun. And now, the Supreme Court has made it uh, part of the rules on the, de on, the, on the declaration of nullity of void marriage. And that ends my uh, presentation on the this uh, particular part of my book conceptual approach to special proceedings. Thank you for watching and for staying until the end of my presentation. Please visit the VLC website at www.villasislawcenter.com to know more about the virtual law companion. Prepare for the bar examinations at any time, anywhere, and from any mobile device. Together, we can.
the new rules on civil procedure. Okay, diretso. Yung 2020 rules on civil procedure were promulgated by the Supreme Court precisely, my friends, because of the Supreme Court's rulemaking power or the power wow, of Prop. 1, actually. So let me begin, my friends, no? So if you will read the, the amendments, actually, if you will study it carefully, you will realize that there are how many areas here? Only nine areas to consider, okay? What are these? Amendments under the rules on pleadings. Pagkasama-samahin ko na. Rule 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13. Then number two, amend, uh, rule, uh, amendments no? under Rule 10 on amendments. Okay? Uh, important changes introduced to the rules of amendment under Rule 10. What else? Amendments under the rules on summons. Rule 14. Okay? What else? Amendments under Rule 15 on motions. Amendments, of course, introduced to Rule uh, to Rule 18, pre-trial. Dito, ayan. And of course, Rule 30, trial, my friends. Finally, there are amendments also that should be discussed under Rule 33, my friends. Okay, under Rule 33, divorce the evidence, and of course, judgment on the pleadings under Rule 34, pen, Rule 34, okay? And of course, summary judgment, Rule 35. So let us enjoy our journey towards the rules on civil procedure. Notable changes in amendment under pleadings, specifically talk about the rule on verification. Di ba? Yung verification po, yung attestations niya, expanded na. Bakit? Okay? I'll start, my friends, no? By uh, first, gito. Di ba yung sa verification, who must sign the verification? General rule, the party must sign the verification. Certification is from shopping. The party must sign. The certification is from shopping. That is the rule. Okay? Pero paano if the party is an individual? Okay? And he executed a special power authority, SPA, authorizing another individual to sign the verification is not allowed. Uh, di ba? What is the... sign the verification. General rule, the party must sign the verification. Certification is from shopping, the party must sign. The certification is from shopping. That is the rule. Okay? But does not fall under the Data Privacy Act if it is an information pertaining to uh, an entity that is not a natural person. Consent must be something integrated in our uh, constitution that you know the state owns all real property and all lands in the Philippines. does not fall under the Data Privacy Act if it is an information pertaining to uh, an entity that is not a natural person. Consent must be something that is mechanical and tangible. It must be proven. That is uh, consent that is required under the Data Privacy Act. You have to prove that you have obtained the consent uh, to from help a data out those subject. So who may wish to have some questions, probably uh, they can send their questions to the uh, Villas' Law Center and we'll try to uh, answer them. We were reminded by the National Privacy Commission that the cardinal rule, if you talk about processing of data information, is that do not collect if you cannot. Okay. The, the primary impact of the Data Privacy Act, my friends, are the eight rights provided by law. Very important. There are eight rights here. You talk about the right to be informed, the right to access, the right to erasure or blocking, the right to object, the right to rectify. You talk about data portability, the right to file a complaint, and of course, the right to, da to damages. Data is more valuable than money. Because if someone takes your money, that's all they have. Okay? But if you let someone take your data, 
Oh my God, eventually, they will take your money too.